So good to be here with you. In these times where it, it's quite easy to get lost in all the dynamics of experience. There's a lot of emotions that are activated, a lot of storylines, a lot of narratives, a lot of agendas, a lot of positioning, a lot of right and wrong, good and bad, us and them, And from one perspective, that's, that's good. That's good. Because in order to move through the veils that veil us from our knowing of our oneness, they have to be active, present, so we can meet them, see them, feel them, acknowledge their presence, and love our ways through them. So thank you for being here. So, hello, Gary, I'm glad you're here. Why do we gather either here in satsang or in our own moments of stillness and presence and contemplation and intentional consciousness. Why? Our original nature of being, our essential nature of being is always present. And it yearns for itself, not with a, mm. not with a desperate desire, but just a natural yearning for a reunification, for a reconnection. When we're so lost in our egoic stories and narratives and identities, the essential oneness of our being feels that disconnect that it's being ignored, that it's not being attended to, to connect, to reconnect to itself, to the knowing of itself. We get so lost in the content of experience and the thoughts and beliefs and feelings and egoic agendas based on our programming and conditioning and oftentimes our wounding but mostly based on our disconnection from our divine nature, our divine truth. That egoic identity runs the agenda. And it's not typically attending to the recognition of the love and the oneness that we all share. So we have this yearning, this natural yearning from the essential nature of us that, that wants to... Hmm attend to itself and the ego says no 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 i got i got other stuff i'm doing we're we're doing other things now we're not attending to the the unification of of the oneness that we are so so we attend satsang we attend to our meditations our studies our journaling just our our conscious attentive lives, attending to the questions, what's really going on here? Who am I really? What is the nature of reality? What is the spiritual dynamic of this human spiritual experience? And that's what we get to explore here and in our meditations and in our own lives. Am I muted? It says, am I muted? I don't know. 
Oh, Henry, I can hear him ill. Okay, good. So, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I am not. Uh, we just keep pushing buttons. Keep pushing buttons till it all works. So a couple of uh, logistics just to get them out of the way. If you're attending as a, an Oasis member, you have the ability to jump into the conversation and have a live uh, discussion. And you can only do that if you've clicked on the link, the uh, attendance link with a Chrome browser. That's, that's the only way that you can then click whatever button it is you've got on your screen that says, I want to uh, uh, join the call, join the conversation. If you have clicked through Safari browser or another browser, that's all right. You can just click out and go back to that original link and click it using the Chrome browser. And then if you so desire to, to be connected, uh, if you're connected through YouTube, uh, then you can chat in any question, idea, thought, share that you want to chat into the open conversation. And also, if you're on YouTube, you'll find in the description of the uh, of the live call, there's a donation link. So if you so desire, there's the opportunity to make a donation toward supporting this open satsang. So I think those are the logistics. All right. So here we are. So today, uh, I'd like to start with speaking to why the activity, the uh, intention of know thyself is so incredibly important, especially in these times, in the next few years, especially when there's going to be a lot of division and arguing and us and them finger pointing. Know thyself. Why is that so important? To know the truth of our being. To know what we really are beyond the egoic self, beyond the personal identity. Is there more to us? And to know that. And to abide that. And abide means to accept without objection, to accept our, our consciousness as who we really are, the awareness of being that we really are, to accept that and not listen to the ego's ob objections to that reality, to abide our truth. Why is that important? Everything that every human being experiences, everything is experienced through the sense of I, right? I, I think this, I believe that, I feel this. I'm angry about that. I'm happy about that. I like that. I don't like that. I think this means that. I think that means that. I, everything is brought through this sense of I, our sense of identity. Everything. I is at the center of our entire experience, every bit of it. So it seems pretty important to know who I is, what true I is and what it is not. 
Because wouldn't we want to attend to this precious, remarkable human experience through the lens, through the perspective or the perception of truth? Why would we want to have this entire experience muddied through faulty perceptions of self? Narratives of I that are constructs of conditioning and programming. Wounding. The egoic identity. If we don't know ourselves, if we don't truly know thyself, truly, the whole, the, the, the dynamic of our being beyond the personal self, beyond the egoic constructs, beyond the stories of mind, prior to mind, pulling back that awareness out of thoughts, out of beliefs, out of storylines, out of narratives, into a larger perspective. The awareness of all of that movement of thoughts and beliefs and ideas and programming and conditioning, the awareness of all of that. Pulling back to that perspective We can know that the truth of us is unwavering, is always at peace, and is the same for everyone. The oneness of consciousness that we all truly are. If we don't know that, then we are filtering everything through our story, through our narrative, through the false self, through a, a thick veil of illusion that believes we are all separate and has forgotten our unity, the truth of our being, our shared being. So that's why it's important to know thyself, because otherwise we're filtering the entire experience of life and, th and therefore all of our reactions and actions. We're filtering that all through a database of self, a story of self that isn't authentic. It's not true. And as we move forward as, as societies and as cultures, it just, it, from my perspective, the world culture, all of the societies cannot truly evolve without knowing truth. without knowing the divine nature that we all share. This beyond any religions, because all religions, if you trace them back, 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 they all come to the same essential understanding that there is a oneness, a beingness, that is expressed through all of our soulful, individuated, soulful portals, if you will, expressions of that oneness. And it's been called all these different gods and all these different entities. But ultimately, even behind that, they all share the same essential essence of oneness, of being. So, know thyself.
prior to thoughts, prior to beliefs, prior to the arising of this emotion and the passing of that emotion and the arising of this feeling and storyline and belief system or anxiety or narrative. What is aware of all of that? That's the question. What is the unmoving awareness of everything before any form, before any thought form, belief form, structural form, physical form, material form, condition, before any of it? What is the nature of consciousness, of being? So... How does this land for you? This importance of knowing thyself truly, fully. And your experience in navigating this knowing because it can be tricky what comes up for you and or what is your experience of allowing who you really are to be present in the background of all experience be known, to be recognized, to be abided, which means to be accepted without ob ob uh, objection. It's the most important thing we can do in this life because everything, everything depends on it. You're either taking in life through the, the essential grace of being through the unwavering presence of loving awareness, or you're taking in life and interpreting it and narrating it through an egoic identity that isn't who you really are. And therefore living an entire life, filtering it all through a muddied perception of your own truth. So how do we get there? When one is well-practiced and has attended to this essence of being on a regular basis, it is so present, it is so known, alive, accessible, that one can simply remember. One can simply remember to say, wait, who am I really? And not just to answer that intellectually, but answer that through the felt perception of the shared oneness, the shared oneness. We can come to cultivate that knowing. Imagine if you had a little clearing in the forest, a really peaceful, beautiful little glen, ferns and filtered sunlight, and very pleasant place. And imagine that you, you walk the path to this beautiful, peaceful place every day, multiple times a day. And then imagine that one day you're not there and something really difficult happens and you need to find your way back to this glen. Well, because you walk it every day, it could be pitch black and you'd still find it. 
It could be pitch black and you would still find it because it's so familiar, the way back, the way there, the way to this peace, to this truth, to this essential essence of being would be so practiced and known you could get back there like that. And that's physically, but you could also not even physically traveling there. You could just remember, know the peace of that place and you'd be there. So this is why we practice. This is why we meditate. This is why we study to remember our truth again and again and again and again and again and again. Now, sometimes that's particularly difficult. Sometimes life's just got us in a real grip. And it's and and just the remembrance or the uh inquiry of who am I really, what's really happening, what is the nature of my essential being prior to this feeling I've got, prior to this anxiety that I'm in, prior to this this fear that has got me, prior to that, who am I really? What is the awareness of all of this? Sometimes that's just too difficult. So we go to the breath. We start with simply bringing our awareness to the breath. And right there, you're pointing your awareness out of the fear, the doubt, the anxiety. And you're pointing the awareness out of that to something else. And we're using the breath. And the beauty of the breath is that it is typically steady, reliable, and often mostly at peace. So we go there first and we rest there for a while, for as long as it takes. And then we can introduce the question, wait, who am I really? What is aware of this anxiety, this passing anxiety? What is aware of that? pulling out of the storm of anxiety into the sky of awareness. I am that. I am that. Always, truly, I am the conscious awareness of all that comes in and out of that awareness. So if it's too hard to get there directly, the direct path, then we use a a step. We go to the breath first. We go to the breath first. to give us a a little bit of a respite, give us a break, give us a a tool. And then we can, then we can use our analogies, sky and weather, movie screen and ever changing movie. And the screen is never bothered by the content of the movie. And you could play a movie of a forest fire and the screen would not burn. And a hurricane could blow through and the sky would not be diminished or harmed or damaged in any way. So we can use our breath. We can use the analogies to allow ourselves to return to a sensation of our truth. Gary. How would you characterize the relationship between the letting go and the dance with the egoic and higher self? Ask that another way, if you would, Gary. So I'm more clear on what you're sitting with and exploring. (sighs) 
the relationship with the letting go. And the dance with the egoic and higher self. The relationship, characterize the relationship between the letting go of ego. Ah, the letting go of ego. And it stands for the higher self. The letting go of ego. Um, what is letting go of ego? It's not the higher self. The higher self has no need to let go of ego because it is not bothered by ego. It knows itself beyond ego. It stays, it remains the same regardless of the condition of ego. So that's important to know. The letting go of ego is the ego surrendering its position. The ego recognizing itself for what it is, which is activity of mind, has no reality to it. And it is veiling truth. So this is why we use the direct path in this practice to go directly to the sensation, the, the sense, the knowing of our essential truth, the unwavering grace of awareness, the equanimity of loving awareness. Because when we can come to know that, even a little bit, it becomes remarkably obvious how much ego veils that truth, how ego, ego wants to run its agenda in order to serve itself. See, the ego is never in service to who you really are. It is always in service to itself. I'm going to clarify that. A, a typical ego is only serving itself. A humbled ego can recognize itself in service to the truth. It can recognize its own machinations and tricks and behaviors and activities and see them and recognize them as getting in the way, clouding the truth of being. So the ego surrenders its position. It's like the concrete of, of a sidewalk falling apart. So the blossoming of a flower that's been wanting to blossom from underneath the sidewalk can finally blossom. Is this getting close to what you're speaking of, Gary? On this path, we need to let go of the ego. And the higher self at the same time must dance with the ego. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the higher self doesn't even dance with the ego. It's not, it's not moving. It's just witnessing, it's just being. The sky isn't really dancing with the weather. The movie screen isn't really dancing with the movie. It just is. We want to be in the isness, in the beingness, the simple 
pure beingness. That then allows us to hear, if you will, to respond to, to even know the presence of the inclinations of our own soul, because every soul is uniquely different. And we can't even acknowledge or hear or abide that soulful inclination of movement in the world if we are being dominated by our egoic demands and need for life to be any particular way. So we need to let go of the ego. Who is the we? Because source, awareness, consciousness does not need to let go of the ego. It's not bothered by it. It's not modified by it. It's not uh, damaged by it. It's not reshaped by it. It is not, it may be obscured by it, but it is not in any way changed by the activity of ego. So the truth of our being, the highest nature of our being doesn't need to let go of the ego. The ego lets go of its own authority. So there's, here's another analogy. Mm -hmm. I'll let you in here in a second, Henry. Beautiful. Here's another analogy. Imagine the space in your bedroom. And if you went to your bedroom and asked the space, tell me about yourself. It would say, oh, I am a bedroom. I am a bedroom. You see, there's a bed and a, and a dresser and... Uh, uh, that chair over there where, the, where I pile my clothes, you know, I'm a bedroom. I'm 20 feet by 30 feet by eight feet tall. And I just told you about myself. And then if you went to the kitchen, you said, tell me about yourself. Oh, I am a kitchen. You can tell because there's a blender and a Cuisinart and a mixing bowl and I'm a kitchen. But then if you went back to the bedroom and you said, wait a minute, you didn't tell me about yourself space. You told me about your container. Tell me about you, space, the space in the bedroom. Don't tell me about the container or the objects. Tell me about you. And the space might say, oh, me? Well, I just am. I just am. If you don't want me to refer to the container, I'll tell you about the space itself, myself. I just am. And then if you ask that space to look out the window and said, okay, and as that, are you any different than that space that is not contained within the walls of this bedroom? You space contained within these walls, are you any different than that space out there? And it would say, no, same space, no difference. The essence of the space is the same. Back to open the window. Let some of that space come into this space. Let some of the space out to that space. Does it change? No, it's all the same essence of space. And then a kitchen can be a kitchen and a bedroom can be a bedroom, but they both recognize that they, that the space, the essence of them is the same, even though the container looks different. The purpose of the kitchen is different than the purpose of the bedroom, but the space is the same.
when we can pull out of our personal stories and recognize that there's an awareness of all of it. The boundless grace of consciousness, that is shared. That's our shared being. Peace, just being. Henry, I'd like to offer my perspective. Yeah, beautiful. Well, hello. Hello, hello, Henry. Good to see you. Good to be here. Good to be seeing you. Good to see you. Okay. Um, so, when Gary was asking about letting go of ego and how to stand with higher self, what it reminded me of, of what you and I talked about numerous times. But the analogy that gets to come to mind for me is the unwavering candle flame. I think of you are being like the wind just blowing back and forth and sometimes it gusts and you know, 100 miles an hour, sometimes it's a little whisper. And by itself, with the candle flame, we're just completely unbothered. So for me, you know, the, there's no letting go of the ego to be really done. Because, like you said, I yourself, you know, truth is completely unaffected in every way, shape, or form. You know, the ego had no bearing on it. Um, so, in a sense, you know, like you said, what, what or who is letting go, you know, that's definitely something to take into account. Um, yeah, and we play with our language because we will say, this is why... This, these conversations are so important because we get to look at our own language and how we're saying something and go, oh, wait, is that accurate? You know, I need to let go of the ego. No, true I, the essential I, the shared I, the I am, doesn't need to let go of the ego, doesn't need to do any of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention also, and if it's uh, kind of what you were asking earlier about how did this land for you and kind of knowing thyself and how it has affected you? You know, for me, you, know, you and I have been doing this work for the last 10 years now, which is mind boggling to me in some ways. Um, but, you know, for me, when I, before I really knew myself as truth, as being, as to consciousness, Life was difficult, chaotic. Um, it was a struggle, you know? And so I think for me, knowing thyself had been the most profound sense of freedom I've ever felt. Um, and, you know, each day, you know, I think I think about it and, like, you know, going back to, you uh, You know, the different modalities of remembering the path, like breathe, going through the breath, and going there directly. You know, my biggest thing that helped me is when I am having, you know, a little bit of trouble getting there directly, you know, when I can, it just takes a step. Like it's instantaneous. You know, I can just stop and say, who am I really? Oh, there I am. You know? And, but sometimes what helped me is like my, for me, imagery, like you said, you know, the Glen, Shady Glen. For me, you know, you and I talked about, you know, a meadow, an expansive meadow where it's like there's no walls anywhere. It's like the the, the space inside the shoebox and the space inside the meadow is the same space. You know. And so I just think, you know, as a whole, you know, and yes, I still have time when I struggle to feel like I'm connected. And that happened every now and then I think to, to a lot of people. But I've noticed that, you know, I don't, I'm okay with not feeling connected to something. I don't cling to it like, oh, I need this to be, to be free, you know? Um, 
Yeah, so I think that's kind of where my head's at. You know, I I, I don't cling to this thing. I just I absolutely have to be the way one hundred percent of the time. But I don't just like well, yes, but away side. Right, because I awareness yeah. would never say I have to be anyway a hundred percent of the time. I already am a certain way a hundred percent of the time i am pure awareness yeah so this is this is you're pointing to something that's going to be really important for more and more people especially when we go move through what most likely are going to be really 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 tough times yeah worldwide there's going to be a lot of feelings Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of uh, triggering. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of fear, doubt, anger, otherness, smugness, <laughs> uh, us and them, division. Okay. Yeah, a lot of things are planning. And to be able to allow ourselves to feel the natural human emotions of fear, of concern, of grief, of empathy, to allow ourselves to feel all of it without needing to suppress or deny or escape or numb. To allow it all is to abide. Yeah the awareness, the allowance of everything that that we need to feel as humans. The idea is to not, and and even if it's, if if it, and even if it moves into hate, I mean, I was going to say, we don't, the idea is that we want to stay, we we don't want our hearts darkened by hate, Mm -hmm. but even to if that were to happen or if we were to fall into such despair to even allow for that mm-hmm. so that it can move so that it can pass so that it can transmute yeah to come to rest in the grace of our being that allows for everything that we might feel and to be honest about it mm-hmm. And to heal. Yeah. I think to too. Yeah, you're not always going to be, you're, you know, you and I talk about this. I just love this about your journey, Henry. Is it how easy it is now for you to allow for your human experience? Yeah. The two words that have been on my mind most recently have been allowing. Like you said, most recent word that have been on my mind and kind of my mantra for the day, for the week, has been allowing and word passing. Because it's so easy to feel like you're stuck in this one area of like, oh, I am anxious and that's, you know, that's it. Or anxiety has me in its grip. But like, like you said, it was anxiety, passing anxiety. You know, passing and allowing have been the biggest, like, go to words from this week. So this is, you're pointing to, this is for everybody here. The inquiry is, whether you can get there directly or you need to go through some time sitting with the breath and just being in a little bit of calmness first. But ultimately, the inquiry is, and what is aware of this feeling? I am not anxious. I am aware of an anxiousness that is moving through my body mind experience. Mm-hmm. Blessings. Thank you, Henry. Cause I know that, and I know I was talking to my sister about this today. Um, how, when we come to rest in our grace, our energy shifts dramatically and those around us, feel it, yeah. whether they know it or not, whether they can even name it. But there's a, there's a, 
energetic presence of safety and of love and of acceptance that is felt. And of course it's felt because we're all the same consciousness. So they may not be aware of it on a, on a, on a conscious level, but the awareness is aware of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when the body mind isn't aware of it. Beautiful. Thank you, Henry. Uh, blessings. So we have the call now here. Yeah, I don't know how to hold on. Wait, maybe I do. There we go. Still learning this technology here. When we're tethered to our truth, we can explore anything and everything. It's kind of like climbing. For those of you who understand climbing at all, when you're climbing up a crack on a big exposed rock face, you're putting in protection, these things called anchors, you're putting them, let's say, into the crack and they're holding in the crack and you run your rope through it so that if you fall, you're, you're not going to fall all the way to the ground. Your anchor is going to hold you. What's beautiful is when you trust your anchors, you can then go exploring into very difficult territory. You can say, okay, I'm going to take my climb over here. Oh my God, this is really difficult. I might fall. But the beautiful thing is you're like, oh no, I'm tethered to safety. I'm tethered to truth. I'm tethered to something that's going to catch me. So I can go exploring and I don't, I won't get so lost in it that I can fall and I'll be okay. When we're tethered to our truth, we can explore the depths of our emotions and our feelings and our, and our wounding and our conditioning and our programming and our fears and our doubts and our angers and our, and our sense of hate and our darkening of our hearts. We can explore all of that and not get thoroughly lost in it because we are tethered in our truth, in our divine nature of unconditional loving awareness. So when we start to get so lost in it, even our starting to get lost in it is witnessed by is uh, happening within the presence of awareness that I am, that we are. So the question is always, and what is aware of this? I am. What does that mean? The one I, the I am. of consciousness and what is the nature of that awareness. Now what's fascinating is we will say, when we run it through our limited mind, we have to, we try to name it. What is the nature of that awareness? It is peaceful, we might say, but that is only r relative to our human anxiety. The anxiety that can arise in the mind feels awareness as peaceful relative to that anxiety. We might say that it is loving. Well, that is in relative to when we feel not loving or, or we're villainizing or we're, or we're hating. So we, we name that oneness, that awareness, peaceful, loving, calm. But if you were to ask the oneness to describe itself prior to the human experience, removed from the human experience, the oneness itself, the consciousness, it wouldn't say I am peaceful because that would be relative to it ever being unpeaceful. It would be relative to it knowing not peaceful. It wouldn't even say I am loving because that would be relative to something that was unloving. All it could say, if you ask the oneness to speak about itself, first of all, it would just be silent. But if you could prod it a little bit and say, no, no, could just, just a few words, just humor us here. Tell us about yourself. 
all it could say is, I am. I am. And we'd say, yeah, but you're peaceful, right? And it would say, I don't even know what that is because that I don't have any relativity to unpeaceful. I just am. Beautiful. Uh, these studies are important. These conversations are important because we're deep in the dream. We're deep in the lost in the content of experience, lost in the content of our feelings and our beliefs and our thoughts and our agendas and lost in the illusion of separation, seeing all the differences, seeing all the rights and wrongs and goods and bads and forgetting our divinity, forgetting the divine nature of our shared consciousness. So we have these conversations to remember the truth, to know thyself. This is the only way that, that the collective is going to evolve into or as peace and love is to recognize the oneness of peace and love that we already are. And again, we call it peace and love because we try to name it to some degree. The shared being. That's it. Politics is not going to save us. Policies are not going to save us. Policies will be an outcome of truth if we reside and rest in the truth. Politics and policies are tools. They are not solutions. The solution is to abide truth, to know thyself. That's the opportunity we have in front of us right now to not get lost in all the division and all of the fighting and all of the uh, movement and activities of our agendas and of our, even of our values and our morals, all the activities of all of that, we can get lost in all of that. Know thyself. Know thyself, truly. Who are you? What are you, really? Abide that, live as that, awaken that, so that that is ever-present in the background of all experience. I am the stillness of awareness in the background of all experience. And so are you, and so is he, and so is she, and so are they. It's all the same. Lost in stories of individuality that are veiling the truth of our oneness. So this is how we move forward. And these are the times that are ahead of us, is a time of collective awakening that starts in each individual heart. So, any other thoughts, reflections, shares, questions, nuance? Any, any yeah buts that come up? Yeah, but, yeah, but what about, what about this? What about that? Ali, the Buddhists talk about no self, emptiness. Uh, yeah, and before I even read the rest of the question, it's an illuminated emptiness. It's an illuminated emptiness. It's an emptiness that is not dark. It's an emptiness that is illuminated with the light of 
consciousness with the light of loving awareness. That's important. I'm sure it has something to do with spaciousness. I am. Can you advise on this? Thank you. Yeah, Ali. It's not even spaciousness. You know, we have limitations of language and we have a limited, li limited mind. We have to understand that, that even our, we will never truly understand the oneness because it, it comes through or we, we interpret it, we, we view it, we initially feel it, but then we go to the mind and we say, what am I feeling? Describe, narrate, uh, define what I'm feeling. Pull up a note here. But everything that the mind knows is refracted through its limitation. Our mind experiences through the illusion of time and space, through the framework of the perspective of time and space. We will never truly in this, through this mind body experience, really know oneness. It's always going to be refracted through our limited experience. So we talk about it in different ways and how we talk about it makes a difference. So when you say, I, I'm sure it has something to do with spaciousness, play with that, recognize that even spaciousness is a limitation of time and space. The oneness, the infinite would be spaciousness. I don't know what, 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 what do you, what, what? Spaciousness is, is still a, has, okay, it's a spaciousness. It still has a boundary. It's a spacious boundary, but it still has an edge. It still has a definition. It still has, and then anything that has a definition, there has to be something on the outside of that definition. Defined as the spaciousness of consciousness, well then, what is beyond that spaciousness of consciousness? So then there's two, at least, at least two. So if we talk about oneness, play Ali with taking away the idea of even spaciousness or boundlessness. We'll often call it boundlessness. It's a full surrender that we sit with and inquire into the feeling of just being beyond all definition, beyond all comprehension, stillness, absolute just being. If you ask the, the consciousness, the, the oneness, tell us about yourself. It wouldn't say I am peaceful. It wouldn't say I am spacious. It wouldn't say I am loving. It would just say, I I don't know what to say. I am. And then imagine adopting that perspective for yourself in this human life. The human experience is happening within the consciousness of pure allowing I am. I am. My humanness gets agitated about this and that and struggles with loving this, but loves that, but not that. And... <sighs> to, to, to watch our struggles, and explore them if we wish. Where is that coming from? Now look at my, look, I'm lost in the content of experience and the I the awareness has been veiled because there's only the bubble of the content of experience popping out of that, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. And what is aware of this bubble of experience? It's like the droplet in an ocean, letting go of its dropletness and recognizing itself as the ocean. The personal self, 
popping out of its bubble of individuality and recognizing the, I'll use the word boundless, which is limiting, but the boundless essence of being. It's a good little meditation to do, to sit and imagine yourself as a little droplet of water with your edges, with your, and then another droplet of water and another droplet of water and all these individual little droplets of water in the ocean. And one of those droplets goes, wait a minute. What if I let go of my edges? What if I let go of my story? What if I let go of my individuality? And the ego would go, no, no. Don't let go of your individuality. Oh my God, you will be annihilated. You'll no longer be the special little droplet. And the droplet says, the heck with it, I'm doing it. And it just lets go of its sense of smallness. And it turns out it doesn't get annihilated. It gets expanded. It grows in its knowing. The ego is the only one afraid of letting go of its definition. Because it doesn't trust that if it did, the knowing of true self would be far greater, if you will. Far more honest, far more true. Yeah, it's good to have these conversations. This is the exploration. We sit in our meditations and we marinate on these things. Who am I really? What is ego? What if I let go? Who's letting go? Yeah, illuminated emptiness. Sitting in meditation, you can inquire, if I let go, no. In sitting in meditation, you can inquire, what if I had no boundaries? What if I had no story? What if I had no narrative of my worth, my value, my position, my validity, my lovability, my sense of me? What if all that was gone right now, just like that? Sitting here in this meditation, if all of that went away, would I disappear? And you realize, well, something would still be sitting here. What is here always when I let go of the bubble, when I let go of the boundaries, when I let go of the smallness, when I let go of the narrative, when I let go, when the narrative lets go of itself? Do you disappear? No. In fact, maybe you'll actually start to appear. Maybe the truth of you can start to blossom when the narrative is let go. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea illuminated. Yeah. All this time, I'm scared of the concept of emptiness as it seems like a dark space seems a bit scary. Yeah, perfect. This is, I love these conversations. Yes, from the perspective of ego, it says there's nothing happening. There's nothing. Without me, I'm all there is. I'm all there has ever been. I'm the only you that has ever existed. It's like being in a deep dream that you've always had and you've never been outside of the dream. And somebody have, have comes to you in the dream and says, stop dreaming. And, and the dream says, but then I, 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 there'd be no more experience. There'd be no more anything. All there's ever been is the dream. And this other 
being in this dream says, no, 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 but the dream's a limitation. If you let it go, you're going to know so much more. And the dream says, I, I've, never, I've never contemplated that. I've never experienced that. I have no inkling of that. I have no concept of that. I've never even considered that. I'm not letting go. I'm just going to try to make the dream better. I'm just going to try to make this the best damn dream I possibly can. It's like, okay, awesome. Have a good dream. <laughs> so we practice the direct path through our inquiries, through the analogies, through our meditations. We inquire feeling into something that exists beyond the dream, the story, the construct, the narrative, the constant activity of ego. And one way to practice that is to sit and inquire. What if I stopped all that story? Would I disappear? And then if it seems black at first, if it seems like there'd be nothing, feel into that. A boundless nothingness. And all that means is no thingness to no self beyond thingness. Now here's the beautiful part of it. When we come to recognize ourselves as that which is unbound by all the thingness of life, we can then come back to all the activity of life and play with it and explore it and be in it and accept it without getting so lost in it. It actually is an ultimate freedom to know ourselves beyond all the condition, all the form, allows us then to come back to the form free. Come to know yourself beyond the mind so that you can return to a more healthy and divine relationship with the mind. Come to know yourself beyond all form, all condition, all narrative, so that you can come back to a, a more authentic relationship with the narrative, with the form, with this life of, of, of seeming individuality and people and relationships and conditions and activities. This is the, 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 the invitation. Come to know yourself beyond all of it. so that you can come back into relationship with all of the form, knowing that you are beyond all of it. And then you can play in it. Yeah, it seems like a dark space, seems a bit scary. Yeah, from the perspective of the bubble from the perspective of the little droplet in the ocean. If I let go of this individuality, I will no longer be just, a, I'll no longer have my edges of definition. Nope, you won't. You'll have new edges of definition. Now you'll be the ocean. It's just a bigger edge of definition, if you will. Because through our limited mind, we're never even going to know the true oneness anyway. And then you imagine that ocean at some level goes, wait a minute, I'm still defined. Now I'm the ocean, but now there's land and ocean. And the ocean even lets go of its edges of definition. And, and now it knows itself as the entire planet, land and water, land and ocean. So it used to be a droplet, let go to be ocean. Then the ocean let go of its edges of definition to become earth. And now the earth even goes, wait a minute, let me let go of my edges of definition. And it becomes a solar system. And that lets go of its definition and becomes a galaxy. And that lets go of its definition and becomes a universe. And that lets go of its definition and lets go into the unknown, into the absolute unknown. Keep letting go. You are not who you think you are. That's for sure. You are not who you think you are. You are not your ego activity.
you are the awareness of all of it. And the nature of that awareness from our perspective tends to be peace, unwavering, undisturbed, allowing. Because allowing is not an activity of mind. True allowing is the very nature of our being. Who are you really? Know thyself. This is the journey that we're here to travel. Know thyself. There's no, there's, there's no more important endeavor. Because if you don't know the truth of your being, then you're going to be seeing the entire world and experiencing everything through the construct of your identity. That causes problems. We see that. We recognize that. <laughs> All right, my friends. All right. We've got about eight minutes left here. Any other thoughts, reflections, shares, questions, little ahas? What is the value of knowing yourself truly? And as Ali so beautifully articulated, is it scary? What comes up for you? Imagine walking through this life in that expanded, pulled out awareness. Being at peace with everything happening in your own mind, everything happening in your own emotional body, loving all of it. Loving just means allowing. It doesn't mean liking. We've confused love with as an extreme form of liking. I love ice cream. I don't love Brussels sprouts. You know, that's a form of like. True love is allowing. It's such an easeful way of living. To be free. to live as who we really are, rather than living collapsed in our narrative of self, in our egoic perspective of life. And as such, we can all be ambassadors of peace. Equanimity, grace, not getting lost in all of the egoic positioning. And it doesn't mean that we don't set boundaries and it doesn't mean that we don't say no to this and fight that and push for this. And... We do that without our hearts being darkened. We take care to help this world of form be form and activity of love and not of division and separateness and derision. and harm, we take actions, we do what needs to be done, but not to get so lost in it all. That we fear losing 
ourselves because it turns out a way differently than what feels loving and what feels generous or mm. yeah loving oh if it goes in a way that it's not loving all will be lost no it won't it'll suck on a lot of levels on a lot of human levels but all will not be lost love cannot be lost it is the essence of our being awareness is unwavering and no matter which way anything turns out it will not change the nature of your being all right my friends much love blessings i'll post when the next hot song is uh up on the oasis um it won't be i think it was going to be on the 22nd or the 24th something like that i'm i'm going away on a retreat for uh 5 days and it happens to be over that next sunday so i'll i'll you'll see it posted as to when it is uh it, it i think it's right after thanksgiving the sunday after thanksgiving i think all right my friends much love and blessings and thank you thank you all right be well